SEO combined with AI should give you the best possible setup to succeed with your SEO strategy. This right here is Squirrely SEO, an SEO WordPress plugin which combines AI with SEO expert knowledge to help you succeed with your SEO marketing. So let's check it out. So here we are in the Squirrely SEO plugin. And as some of you maybe noticed, I'm in a WordPress setup here. Squirrely SEO does also have a cloud app, but it is the same things that you can do. Here is just more integrated. So we will use this as an example. And they have just revamped the entire design. So the first thing we see here is an overview. And on the overview, we have what we need to focus on next. We have the main features. And then down here you can see we have some material that we can read, watch, use in order to improve our SEO. What I will recommend you doing is starting by taking a one page setup. So in here you choose whether you need no SEO configuration, if you need the recommended mode or an expert mode. So I will choose expert mode for now. You can see there are some different steps we need to go through. We have some automation, we need to add a page and so forth. So scrolling down here, you're basically building your XML sitemap. And this sitemap is used for Google Search Console. So Google knows what pages do you want to be crawled and what pages do you not want to be crawled. So here you can see that I want my home page to be crawled. I want my posts and my pages. And then I also want my images, videos. And here there is actually a nice feature. So here, every time it is that I make a new post, then automatically this plugin will then ping the different types of search engines to tell them that now they need to crawl this post and this will allow this post to be able to rank faster. We also have robots.txt you can enable and then we have some meta tags that you can enable as well for the title, the description, the keyword which doesn't really make a lot of sense, the canonical and so forth. We also have social media, rich snippets, SEO automation and extra options down here. So they do support local SEO for an optimization standpoint, but it's not something I will dive into now. So let's save and continue. So here on the next step is where you can set focus pages. And a focus page is something you really want to spend time and energy on getting to rank on Google. So normally you will set two to three different types of pages or posts as your focus page or post. And then you will do everything you can to optimize that. So you can see I have here workload management for better teamwork. I have set that as a focus page. Let's also set this one up here as a focus page. And then we'll now move on to the next step. On the next step here is where you set your social media accounts, your Twitter, Facebook and so forth. And then down here you can set an organization name description, some address, and here I have just set the logo. This is just some information that they will use and this is made for EAT. So this will help you basically create authority within your industry if it shows that you know what you're talking about. But it is a minor thing, of course, it is always your content talking for your authority. So let's save and continue. So here we need to mention what is the topic overall for our site. So I'll just write a to do app here, then save and continue. So now it is ready. And down here you can see that if you're an SEO beginner, you click this button. But if you're an SEO expert, you click this button. So as I chose the SEO expert before, I will click that button. Here you can see that you need to set your blocking frequency. You need to set some different settings down here that we already set before in our XML. Over here we have our robot file that we can fill out, change and edit. And then we have some advanced settings. If you want to load squirrely frontend CSS, if you want to use the late buffer and so forth. This is just some advanced to basically optimize your squirrely setup. For every module you're within, you have a to do out here. And I have already filled out all of these different to do's, but what it says here is that you can also connect your Google Analytics and your Google Search Console. And what this helps you with is basically to be able to track better and easier and just make the data flow much better. 
Out here we always have a menu where we can go through the different types of tools that we have in this module. So before we were on tweaks and sitemaps, you can see we also have the SEO metas, we have social media and so forth, but we have already set all of these settings. So now let's go back and choose another module. And here one thing I do not like that much about Squirrely SEO is now when I want to go back to a different module, I have to click on the logo. I can't get it to show in the menu itself. So you can see we have made some changes. So right now it's checking the website just to see if we need to change anything. But if you want to do that manually, you can always click up here to run an SEO test. Now when we've been through the one page setup, let's go to the keyword research. This is just a keyword research tool where you can apply any keyword and then you will get some assumption, you will get some suggestions for what keywords you can track as well. So here let's set a to-do app as a keyword. I will not choose a country, I will just go to the next one. So here Squirrely SEO, based on the data that they already have, the data from Google and so forth, are suggesting me to maybe take a look at these keywords. So I like this keyword down here and I also like the to-do app free keyword. And then let's just keep it at that and then we'll do our research. Now within these keywords we have chosen, we can then choose to do a research for up to 20 results or for 50 results. For now, we'll just do for 20 results. So now it is ready and it is giving me brilliant information. It is not a lot, but it's exactly what I need. So basically it is sorted by the keyword on top is what is the highest chance of ranking. So here it is saying there is a low ranking chance on this keyword. That means it's very populated and there's a lot of different companies which are focused on this keyword. So you can see here that it is discussed very few times. The search on this keyword is 10 to 100 per month. I think it's a lot higher. So these different types of intervals you need to take with a grain of salt because that is just an approximate result. You can see we added to do app ourselves that is searched approximately 2000 times a month, but there is a very low ranking chain for this one. But what I want to do now is I want to add this keyword to my briefcase. It is already added. So I'll just take this one and add. What you can also choose, let's say that we want to rank for this keyword to do list app, then you can choose to optimize for this. So if I click on optimize for this, then we will be shown basically a new post where it has filled out already out here. And then we can basically just start writing. I will come back to this view just in a moment. But now when we have added the keyword to our briefcase, we can go into our briefcase and then we can see the keywords in here. So here you can see whether we are ranking or not on these different keywords. We can see some more information, which is basically the same we saw just before. We can see how much it's searched and so forth. So this is basically just to see how you're ranking on the different keywords. You can also create labels for your keywords if you want to make it easier to organize your keywords. And then you can see the suggested keywords as well. That is the keyword research tool and it is very extensive and I've had a lot of luck finding different keywords or search phrases that I can focus on for my WordPress setup here. But let's try and go back now. So we've been through the keyword research and the briefcase. The next is our live assistant. So the live assistant is basically within when it is we sit and basically write our content. So here you can see that we can add a new post or page and then start typing and optimizing for that. But what I want to show you is a post I've already made. So here we have a post about you have to plan your week online, a digital way of being productive. It's not so long, but it is optimized. So you can see my squirrely score over here is 78%, which is rather good, but it is based on this keyword here. We can then enhance it here where we can use images. We can see how it's talked about on Twitter, on Wikipedia. And with Squirrely's own blogging assistant, you can see that they are finding relevant content that I can use or I can read in order to improve my blog post even more. And the last one here is just even more content. It's basically my own articles that I can use in order to see whether I can make maybe a linking between them or I can just use some of the content I've already written. Step three is the analysis. So in here is basically a check mark. So here you can see that we need to use the keyword with two or more words. We need to make sure that the keyword is presented in the URL. 
We need to make sure that the title is Google friendly. It says it's over optimized in this case. And there are some more elements here. So here you can see that it is telling me to write one or more words after my first keyword. And then it is highlighting where I'm using this keyword. For now, this looks good. You can see there are a lot of different checkpoints that we can go through. I will just continue to the last step, which is the deep focus step. So as I showed you before, you can add this as a focus page. And when you have it as a focus page, then you get even more data. So let's see one of the focus pages here we have up here. Let's see the task that Squirrely SEO is telling me to focus on in order to make this rank higher. So you can see we have a lot of different things that we need to focus on here. We do not have enough backlinks. We don't have any inner links. The traffic health is not very good. We need to focus on the strategy and so forth. So for backlinks and for inner links, that makes sense. And the same for an SEO image, that also makes sense. But what I'm missing is when I click on strategy here, it needs to tell me what to do. And it is telling me I need to add this keyword to my briefcase and then I need to make a label that exists for it. It is not necessarily doing something for the SEO changes of this article ranking, but it is helping you having a bigger focus on it. For backlinks here, you see that we need to have at least 100 backlinks. We need to have 30 referring domains and 100 majestic SEO links. The same for the inner links here, we need to get five inner links. Over here in the platform health, you can see we need to get an audit score above 70%. Right now it's just 70. And then we need to work on the SEO score. Right now it is loading with a 2.99 second. We need to get that down. So all of these different points, you can always click on to see what it is you need to improve. And when you improve these different elements, then you will see hopefully your post rank higher. And that is what I really like about these focus pages. Furthermore, then you have material down here that you can use and you have some tips and tricks as well. But the focus pages you should only use for the posts or pages that you're focused on getting ranked really high. And maybe they're a little bit difficult to rank, but especially for those pages that brings in the revenue or brings in the traffic to your website. Within Squirrely SEO, there are a lot of tools. For instance, here we have bulk SEO. And within bulk SEO, you can see that we get an overview of all of our posts and pages. You can change up here to do page instead. And then we can see what are we missing. So on the pricing page, for instance, I'm missing some meta tags, I'm missing open graph, and I'm missing a Twitter card. And that is counting for all of my different pages. Going back to the post, it looked a lot better. But you can see on this post here, I need to add some meta tags. And on this post here, I need to add some open graph as well. So this is just a great way for you to fast see whether there is some any technical SEO that you need to get in order. And they have a lot of tools like this within Squirrely SEO. The last tool I just want to show you is the SEO audits because you can run an SEO audit for a specific page. So in here, let's say that we want to add this page here for an audit. What it will now do is that it will analyze this page and basically give me some points that I need to improve. So here, this is a different one. Let's use this one as an example. Here, my audit score is 62. And of course, we want to get it above 80, but as close to 100 as possible. Scrolling down here is where we can see what we need to improve. There is especially the traffic points we need to approve. Here it is telling me that within the SEO, I'm doing 22 out of 22, which is fantastic. Scrolling further down, there should be some points that we need to improve. So within social, we need to add share buttons in the article and we need to get it shared on social media as well. Scrolling further down, we need backlinks, especially mass backlinks, and we need backlinks with no follow as well. We need some page authority. Right now it is 3.0 in average authority. We need to get that up. We need to get our Alexa rank down and so forth. So you can see by running this site audit, we get a technical review of our page or post to see what we need to improve. Of course, it is not analyzing the content itself. It is taking it from a technical point of view. Now let's discuss pricing. 
they don't have a free plan or a trial where you can try out Squirrely. They only have three paid plans that you can try out. And these three paid plans can be confusing when you look at them, but just be aware that they differ on both features and the limits that you get, especially for the keyword research tool. I will say that I will recommend the pro plan to most of you guys. But let's move on to the alternatives. The first alternative is Yoast SEO. And I will say that Yoast SEO up till the recent years has really been popular. It has been the number one choice of SEO plugins. You could almost not find a WordPress website where Yoast SEO was not installed. But in the recent years, we've seen Rank Math SEO popping up and then we have seen Squirrely SEO pop up as well. And Yoast SEO is really starting to fall behind, especially on their features. They're not following up on the AI possibilities and so much more. But the other alternative is Rank Math SEO. Personally, on my multiple websites, I'm using a mix between Rank Math SEO and Squirrely SEO. And Rank Math SEO is at the moment my absolute favorite SEO WordPress plugin. And that is especially because they are so much on the beat with their different features. They have just recently released an AI feature where we can generate content that we can use on our WordPress website. And we can do this within our WordPress website. So we don't need a third party program to do this. And the schema structure within Rank Math SEO is what really set Rank Math SEO apart because it is just outstanding. And that is something I have seen over and over again. So in the bunch of these three SEO plugins, I will say that Rank Math SEO and Squirrely SEO are up there. I'm just really hoping that Squirrely SEO will take a look at their UX to modernize it, but also make it easier to use and maybe start to play more with AI than they're doing already. Because Rank Math SEO is still a tad in front of Squirrely SEO in terms of features and usability. Now let's take a look at the roadmap. This roadmap is really packed with features, design optimizations, and overall just fixes. It is really exciting, but there are some elements that I have pointed out. And the first one is they just revamped the entire design of the plugin, which means that the cloud app now needs to get this new design. Furthermore, then they're working on a lot of different customer experience optimizations so it gets easier to use because even though we have a new design, it is still not totally optimized to be easy to use all the different features. Then they're working on a new backlink and social media reporting so we get more data and maybe just in a prettier format when we pull out all of these reports. And last but not least, then they're working on a huge local ranking module. This means that not only can we track our rankings in our local environments and our local cities, but we can also optimize our content to rank higher in the locals. So that will be really interesting to see how they will develop that and how easy it will be to use. After using Squirrely SEO for some time, what I really like is that finally we have a plugin which is good at explaining what they're doing in the different SEO processes. And then just the keyword research tool is so outstanding. Though I will say that the UX needs even more improvements. I know they have just revamped it, but I don't feel it's there. It's still difficult to use. And then the local rankings, I'm hoping to see just an MVP in the near future. Squirrely SEO has tried to take a different approach to the market of SEO plugins and their keyword research tool is extensive plus their live assistant takes it an even step further. I want to give Squirrely SEO four and a half stars. It is an outstanding plugin, but the design is still a setback for me. They are getting closer though. That's my review. Thank you so much for watching. Let's catch up on the next one.